What's up guys, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today you're watching part three of our top end engine rebuilding series. We're gonna start out with prepping our piston by installing the circlip onto the left side. To get this done, we're first gonna install the wrist pin so we can use the circlip installer tool. This tool slides into the wrist pin to center it, and then you can press in on it and rotate the tool to work the clip on. You may have to take several small bites as you do this. Now, this clip, it's so stiff, it's almost impossible to get on without this tool. Now these rings already come installed on this piston, but we wanna make sure that the gaps are staggered. So this top one, I'm gonna leave that where it's at. The second one below it, you can see the gap is pretty much in the same spot. So we're just gonna rotate that about 90 degrees. And then we're gonna put this oil control ring, we'll put that gap towards the back. So now that we're staggered, we're gonna lube up this piston and rings, and then we're gonna compress them in our piston ring compressor. We'll also apply some oil to our tool. Next, we're gonna take our Bike Master ring compressor. This one is the 90 to 175 millimeter compressor that's available on our site. And once that's placed over the piston, we'll just use the tool and tighten the rings down. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of oil and lube up this cylinder. All right, the next thing we wanna do, we have the bottom of our piston skirt hanging down. That way it's going to center itself in the cylinder. And then this is gonna be the exhaust side. So we have this arrow, that arrow faces towards the exhaust side. So we'll set it in just like that. And then to get this installed, you can use the end of your mallet, or if you have a hammer with a wooden handle, you can use that. And you're gonna use that to smack the piston into place. If it stops, don't try to keep hitting it in. You might not have the rings compressed far enough, but it should go in smooth. Next, we'll set our base gasket into place. And before you put the base gasket on, make sure you put just a little bit of silicone right where the case halves meet. Next, we're gonna apply some assembly lube to our wrist pin. And I'm gonna slide this into the wrist pin boss on the piston. Then we can lower the cylinder down onto that small end on the connecting rod. And with that in place, we can install the other circlip. And you'll notice that I have some rags covering up the bottom end, just in case that circlip pops out, it doesn't go down in there. Now we can remove our rags from the bottom end. and slide the cylinder down into place. You wanna make sure that this timing chain guide is also lined up with this cylinder. Now we're gonna install our new bearings into the cylinder head. At this point, we're ready to go together with the cylinder head. So I'm gonna spray all these parts down with a light oil. Then for the guide seals, I'm using some assembly lube. And then 
on the valve stems, we'll also be using the assembly loop. All right, now that everything's lubed up, I'm going to lay my spring seats into place. And then to install these guide seals, what we're gonna do is actually use a socket. And the socket, it's gonna fit around that spring so it's not even gonna to touch it. And we can just press down on that metal shell. And when you press down, you can feel those pop into place. After that, we'll tip the cylinder head on its side and install the corresponding valves into their guides. Then we'll install the spring, the valve spring retainer, and we're going to use our valve spring compressor. Then once the spring is compressed far enough, we're going to install the keepers. I'm just using a little grease on a screwdriver to help with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat all of these same steps to get the other three valves installed. To make sure these keepers are seated all the way, I'm gonna take a plastic mallet and I've supported the cylinder head on a couple of boards. That way the valves can open up a little bit. So I'm gonna set the mallet on the end of that valve and use another mallet. And we're just gonna pop each valve open just a little bit. After that, we can remove any excess oil from the cylinder and then install the cylinder head gasket. And we'll make sure that gasket is lined up with the dowel pins. And now we can install our cylinder head. Now we've got our four brand new cylinder head studs. I've put oil on these threads. But before you tighten those down, the three bolts that go in the side, you want some medium strength thread lock on those. And don't tighten them down yet, just get the thread started. So now in a crisscross pattern, we can start torquing these cylinder head bolts down. So I'm just gonna lightly seat them with the T-handle first. So we're gonna start with this one and tighten it to 11.1 foot-pounds. Next, we'll jump up to 22.1 foot-pounds. Next, we'll take it up to 33.2 foot-pounds. And the last step is gonna be 44.3 foot-pounds. And we'll torque these side bolts to 7.4 foot-pounds. Next, we want to make sure we have the piston at top dead center. So I'm just using a screwdriver and rotating the crank just to make sure the piston is at its highest point. All right, now we can lube our camshaft and our cam bearings. Then we can take the camshaft and we're going to slide this into place. Now just keep in mind the line in the camshaft needs to be vertical and line up with our retainer once it's installed. Now we can install the retainer with that mark facing out and torque the bolt to 7.4 foot-pounds with medium strength Loctite. And one note about these rocker arms, we have this little flat machine surface on top of the pin that goes through them. Make sure that is facing up. Now 
Next we can install our tensioner. We're going to torque the cap to 18.4 foot-pounds. We've got our new crush washer on there. Now we can remove this cap and we're going to use a screwdriver to press in on the tensioner until it releases and tensions the chain. And once you're back together, you want to make sure you have the correct valve clearance on this engine. It's three to five thousandths of an inch. Once you've inspected your valve clearance and made sure it's okay, you can install your valve cover. Now you want to inspect the valve cover gasket, check it for any tears or rips, and then same with these grommets. If these are in bad condition, which ours were, you want to go ahead and replace them. We'll torque these to 7.4 foot-pounds. All right, next we're going to install the thermostat. Now there is a drill hole at the top. You want to make sure that's facing upward. Then we can install the hose with the bolts. I'm going to Loctite these ones and just like any other M6 bolt, they're going to get torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds. And we can install our other cooling hose. And we can install the timing cap. Don't over tighten this, it's just plastic. And we can put our breather hose into place. Then install the starter. We've applied grease to the O-ring. This front bolt I'm going to leave loose. This back one I've applied Loctite to and we'll tighten it down. And last we're going to install the intake boot. Just make sure it's lined up with the groove at the bottom. And that's it for the top end assembly on the KTM 690 and Husky 701. If you need any of the parts we used, check out our website, go on the OEM diagrams and get those there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and follow us over to the last part of this engine rebuild series and we'll show you how to get this engine installed back into the frame. I'm Charles, thanks for watching.